Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did this gorgeous 22 by 28 inch scene on a black canvas with four scenes, four colors, four portals, and it just turned out four amazing. Is that a word? <laughs> but you're obviously excited to paint this painting. So check the description down below. Find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. Let's do it just like this. Hey guys, back again. Paint with Josh. We're in the studio. We're rocking and rolling. We're gonna try to do a four seasons canvas. So. If you're trying to make a Four Seasons painting, and this actually made it to YouTube, then it turned out pretty good, and you've already seen the thumbnail, so you already know what it looks like, and you want to paint it. So, thank you for clicking on this link. And as you can see, we've accidentally got a little bit of our, our liquid white spray as we've been spraying stars, as this one's kind of been off to, the, off to the side, waiting, waiting for its turn, which is totally fine. We're gonna have stars all over this thing. It's a portal painting out into space. So it doesn't really bother me that we're gonna have a few little white stars across there. They're gonna get covered in their undercolors anyway. And all we're doing is just covering the canvas with Bob Ross Liquid Clear. If you don't have Liquid Clear, you can use linseed oil. I hear that's a good replacement. I've never used it myself, but I hear it's a good replacement. I got bristle in here. I got to get out. Ooh, I need two hands for this surgery. There we go. That old guy stuck in there. So as long as we got our liquid clear, our linseed oil nice and spread across the entire canvas, we're going to be all right and all ready to go, right? So what we're going to do then is grab a bit of our paper towels and we're going to wipe off all this excess clear. It's a lot of clear still on the canvas. So let's wipe that off. And in the meantime, I have my two cake pans. If you don't have cake pans, use paper plates or whatever's gonna fit on your canvas, right? That's what we're gonna wanna use is whatever's gonna fit in four circles on the canvas, just like that. And then we'll take our paper towels and then we'll wipe it off and get, all, get rid of all this excess. I like using the Viva brand. They're like super soft and they don't leave too many little linty bits on the canvas, you know what I mean? Some of those brands, you can wipe it and you get all these lint bits stuck to the canvas everywhere. So we're going to wipe it off just like this. Nice and rough, pushing on it hard. You can hear it. Getting rid of all that. Look at all this excess and all the green color that was still inside the brush, apparently. When <laughs> we went to go do it. There we go. Picked it up off the easel. I must have. There we are. Now just wipe all that off. And then we'll get ready to start the TikTok stream and get ready to go. So, just like that. Don't want to have too much for sure. Before we start the TikTok stream, let's get all of our undercolors on the canvas, right? So if you're ever wondering what or how we do the undercolors, you're going to know and you're going to find out today, right? So I was thinking about doing like you know different like yellow and green complementary colors yellow and green blue and red something like that you know what I mean do spring summer fall winter blue red green it's all mixed up in my head I don't know what we're gonna do honestly I have no clue how to place it maybe do winter at the top go winter fall so like red blue or yeah blue red Winter, fall, summer, spring, so green, yellow, blue, red, green, yellow, which means we flipped it. It would be yellow, green, blue, so I'm going to have to totally cut this part out of the video. This is ridiculous. I can't even figure this out. Yellow, green. No, green, yellow, right? Green and yellow. Spring, summer, green, yellow, red. No, so yellow over here then. Dang it. So then we do spring, summer. This is all screwed up. Who knows? We're just gonna, they're just not gonna have to blend very well then. So we'll do, we'll do green, red, uh, sorry, green, yellow, and then blue and red. And that's just what it's gonna have to be. So let's get our yellow. I didn't realize I'd have to get every single color out of the back. Clean this. Sure did. All right, now we're gonna go in. We're gonna put our liquid clear away so I don't knock it over. Let's get just a little bit of thinner so we can be all set up for the dang show. Now we won't have to stop in between. 
go get something else. There's all these things we have to prepare for that you guys normally never see. I don't even know why you're watching this part of the video. Like, I probably have cut this section out because nobody wants to watch this, Josh. They probably do, actually. They probably really do. I should probably actually leave it in. Josh, leave this part in. Can you hear me? Leave this part in. If they scroll past it, they scroll past it, right? Like, otherwise people want to see how we get set up. And you probably can't even really see that well anyway, what I'm doing. So we'll want to decide. Okay, so let's come in with our, uh, what we say we're going to do yellow. There's our Indian yellow. Not any other bright color, just the Indian yellow. And a, just a little amount on the brush because it's going to show very brightly on this black canvas, right? So we're going to come in here and let's start lighting it up like this. Only about the top quarter, right? So we've got our yellow. No, we were going to put our yellow over there. <laughs> ah, it's all good. We can add the green over on that side. So let's do it like this then. A little bit more paint, pushing it out, right? Just like that. Blending it all out. Sort of making them neat in the corners. I want it to be sort of dark, right? It doesn't have to be super bright. And you can always go back in and add little bits of uh, brown and different things to darken up our edges and stuff. So no worries, right? Look at how we can stretch this paint, very thin coat. Because we want a lot of pressure. We can slide it, we can push it, we can do all sorts of things with it, right? Very cool. Very cool. Now I'm gonna keep all this yellow on my brush. Right? And add a little bit more down here, why not? Make it a little bit thicker, a little bit brighter. Keep all the yellow on the brush, and then let's go into our red. A little bit of our red and our crimson together. Don't want to just go straight bright red. That's going to be too bright. All right, so a little of our crimsony mix, a little of our red mix. We'll come down here, make our little bit, and these guys are going to blend in. They'll become this cool orange mix in between there with our little bits of color. The more and more and more you do, all right? Come back in here. Just get it on there all nasty, and then we'll spread it out. Make sure it's very thin. Very soft, leaving dark edges, right? Little dark areas. Don't want to make it too bright. Now we got our red color in. It'll be a nice little fall setting. Really cool. Really cool. Yeah, no spring, uh, summer. Spring, summer, fall, winter. It'd be like a... Should be really cool. Should be, right? Now we can even get a little bit more of that orangey reddish color. Let's start to work that in up here. Just a little bit though, just to change it. Right? Just so it's a little different. And that way. There we go. Ooh, that's cool. That's pretty wicked cool. Get a little bit more of our yellow down in here as well, because we're gonna do like a fall scene inside the red and orange. So that should be really neat. Just dumping it on there, getting all sorts of crazy. And then we'll get a different brush, or you can wash that brush. I'm gonna get a different brush. And we're going to come into our green first. A little bit of the green out here. Kind of start next to our yellow and then we'll work it out and down, right? Just like that. Don't need to have too much color because it's really going to show and be really bright, right? We don't need it to be super bright. And then we'll have all of our little auras in between. It's going to look very, very, very cool. Very cool. I'm gonna come down here a little bit, let it get darker and darker and darker, and then we'll switch to our blue on the same brush, right in here by our reddish color, and we'll work the blue out. The blue stays very, very, very dark. It's one of my favorite colors to work with on a dark canvas because it stays so dark. All right, and then in between here, we're just gonna sort of mix them until we get like a, just a little line in there. Perfect, that's all we really need. A little bit of softness. A little bit of blue, a little bit here, a little bit there. Drag that green and blue together in different, you know, things. Dragging it back and forth. Very cool. Go back to our orange on our brush. That orangey, yellowish brush. And come in here, just mix these guys. Coming in together, mixing them back and forth. And you can see I'm sort of hitting that little center bar that's in the middle there. There's a cool little trick you can do. Just by pushing your hand behind the canvas and pushing it outward away from that center bar out into the room. Go over it and just blend it right out. It's very cool. Very neat, very cool. Gonna blend these guys together so softly. Sometimes a little bit of yellow more over than the ending. There's the green over on this side, back and forth. There, perfect. We don't need it to be too crazy. It doesn't have to be the most perfect thing, right? You can even take 
a bit of our little orangey brush, pull it into our thing, just by dabbing it off, coming from the side, pulling it over so it's not just a perfect square, right? We might just mix them up and do all sorts of stuff in there. Very cool, very cool. Okay, now let's turn on the other camera and we'll get rocking and rolling. And then everybody can, from over there, can come over here to watch the YouTube video when it's done. So, I'm Paint with Josh. Hi guys, welcome. Uh, if you can see the title of this uh, live stream, it's called Four Seasons uh, Landscape Demo, right? Something like that. At least that's what I think I wrote. So I'm gonna show you what we've done already, okay? We've taken, because I didn't want to spend too much time getting prepped and ready to go. Uh, this took about 15 minutes to get all these colors and everything on there. I didn't want you guys sitting there for 15 minutes. So, we've got our Bob Ross Liquid Clear, covered the entire canvas, then we took a piece of paper towel, wiped it all off, right? And then we went back in, first covered our yellow section with our Indian yellow, then we did our red with our red and crimson, then we came up here with a different brush, grabbed our green, did the green, and then we did our Prussian blue down here in the side. So we're gonna go green, yellow, it's actually gonna go green, yellow, red, blue, almost like this. I tried, I tried to think about it for 10 minutes about how to set these things up and do it the right way to go spring, summer, you know, fall, winter, but have them all blend together. And it just wasn't gonna work unless I did it this way. For whatever reason, I couldn't figure it out. So tell me guys, where you're watching from, what's your favorite sandwich? What did you have for dinner? What did you last drink? What are you drinking right now, right? What's your favorite cocktail? Tell me that. So we're gonna go through all the colors that we have. We're gonna grab our little cake pan. We're gonna be using a lot of the cake pan today. So you can grab a paper plate. Uh, just about the same size. It's an eight inch cake pan. So grab an eight inch paper plate and we're working on a two inch, uh, 22 inch by 28 inch canvas. A little bit big, big enough to handle all four of these anyway. So let's go into our white. We've already gone through all these colors, right? We've got our cad yellow, our uh, Indian yellow, bright red, yellow ochre, then our Van Dyke brown and dark sienna, the two browns, our sap green, Thalo green, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white. And we're gonna come into the titanium white, just like this. It's a very, very bright black, this titanium white right here. It's very bright black. <laughs> Pure titanium white, right? Just like that. Don't need a whole lot, just a little bit on the ends of the brush. You guys tell me where you're watching from. And we're gonna get all set up to do at least the first, maybe we should do all four auras right in a row and get everybody all hooked. That's what she said. Ramen noodles. I like that. Let's see. Good idea for the four seasons. Thank you, Jimmy. We'll see how it works with the portal paintings. So let's come over and we'll do, for whatever reason, I want to do this one first. Right? And I was thinking about lining them up a little bit staggered. So you'd have one up here and then one slightly down and then one down here and then one slightly down. You know what I mean? Or should I just do them straight and like dead in the center of where they should be? I can't ever figure it out. All right, let's do it just like this. We're gonna go, yeah, no, we're gonna put them right in the center. Okay, let's go like that. Right in the middle of our yellow section, we're gonna grab our white, Looks just like that. We're gonna go around the edge, very lightly making very little contact with the, with the actual canvas, right? Very small pressure, light, 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 light pressure, right? And then we'll have this gorgeous yellow Aurora out here. It's gonna be fantastic keeping it tight to the edge of our, of our pan, right? Without moving the pan, you can come up and start creating little bits of sun rays kind of shooting out from around our little aura and they're gonna interact with whatever color is beneath them, right? This is why we add our under colors first. And then you have all these cool little things that'll start to happen. It'll have your yellows, it'll mix with the green, it'll have the orange. When we get down to our blue section, it's gonna have the blue. It's gonna be fantastic. And we don't want to have them all the same length. I've done a fair amount of these portal paintings now, and I think they look a little bit better if you've got a few little areas of, of you know, short little bits of kind of sun rays coming out, a few areas where they're longer, a couple real stringy bits. Like it just looks better if it's not all the same, right? You think it might look cool if they were all the same around, but it just starts to look boring after a while. There we go. Remember guys, you can buy this painting if you head over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, that's my store website. You can buy every painting that we have over there available. They're all 40% off and they're all free worldwide shipping everywhere. 
All right, there we go. Very cool. I like having these little bits, just like a clock, all the way around, right? Very neat. I come in here, a couple little bits, make them a little brighter, and then we'll go back with our brush and kind of pull them out a little bit, all right? Make sure we get right up to our line. And remember, if you want to re-watch this show, I'm filming a YouTube tutorial for it. So I figured everybody was going to want to see how we did the Four Seasons painting. So I'm already filming a video and you can be able to go over and watch that video probably in a few days when I get it, uh, maybe next week. By the time it gets uploaded, maybe next week or the week after that, you'll be able to watch the Four Seasons video. So follow me on Facebook, follow me on YouTube and Insta, and you'll be able to see all the posts that are leading up to that video, which is this video, right? So watch this awesome reveal. You guys ready? One, two, boom, look at that. Holy cow, just a sweet, if I've ever seen one, sweet little eclipse. Now, what we're gonna do is instead of filling in that scene now, we're gonna go do all the little rest of the auroras. So I'm gonna come down into here with our yellow, slightly still on the brush. We might as well do the red one while we're down here, and then we can wash the brush off and go do the green and then the blue, right? So I'm gonna wipe off my, my little cake pan down on my paper towel, right? Just like that, so we have it nice and clean around the edges. And of course, there's still, even though I wiped it, there's still paint. But as long as there's not paint right on the front, right? Because the part that makes contact with the canvas is that if that's clean, then you know that it, you can touch it and move it and not leave little rings, right? So you guys tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? This is cool. It's going to be awesome. It's definitely going to be awesome when we, uh, when we get finished, right? I'm going to try to zoom out just a little as bit so we can see the whole canvas. There we go. Now we're going to come over here with our next little moon, and these guys are going to connect right around the center, right? So let's try to get them about the same. And this is what I was talking about. I could lay, I could put them down just a little, right? just a little bit. What do you guys think? Should we put it offset, like down a little bit? Because then you start to run out of room for the bottom. Now we're gonna do it right here in the middle. We'll do it right here. Make them as, as close as we can possibly get them to themselves. Very cool. Look at this little thing. It's sticking out trying to that's going to ruin my day if that came up and touched the canvas where it wasn't supposed to. Okay, now, over here, let's do this. We're going to come around. We're going to start lighting up this guy. He's going to turn green instantly because he's got all this green color underneath it, right? We're just going to go around. Making our little line. You can almost do it without our, our little circle. I think it looks a little bit better. You give yourself a little bit more color to work with, a little bit more things to pull out if you have that little line, but you can almost do it without even doing that line initially. If you really think about it, bam, just like that. Come around here, there we go. Now it gives us some paint to pull out. Hold our brush a different way just to access the, the angles that we have to get to while we do these things. Just all crazy, right? Little bits, a little further down than anywhere else. All depends, they don't all have to look the same. That's for sure. And these guys are gonna mesh right in the middle so we don't have to add too much paint right there, right? And then you pull one across the other one. It usually looks really cool. That's what we did with the other two big ones. We did one like this. It was just two scenes on the same size canvas, but with much bigger portals in between, right? And they looked awesome. And you kind of pulled them out uh, across each other. And so you'd have bits that were sticking out and then bits that weren't. Very neat, guys. This one's coming out cool. And this isn't the final shape of it, right? We're gonna take it and we're gonna hit it with the brush. So don't worry about what it looks like here. We're gonna go back and soften it with the brush once we get all of them rocking and rolling, right? That's very neat. We kind of overlapped on our one Aurora bit, but it's okay. We're gonna fill in the interior of these things anyway, so it's totally fine. Totally fine. You come up here, grab our little bit. This is why I like to do it with the thing on it because then you don't have to worry about reaching inside of your aurora or your aura of your eclipse and, and pulling it out, right? There we go. So soft. Man, that's cool. Some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. You get to decide, and then we're going to stretch them out, so don't forget. Okay, we're going to flip our thing over here. We're going to wipe it on our paper towel and try to get off any amount of whiteness just around the top of our paper plate or our, or our cake pan or whatever it is. Now I'm gonna wash the brush or change brushes. This time we're gonna wash it because it seems easier and I've got my hands full. So let's wash it in here. And then we'll go back, always dab it off on a paper towel. I'm like, I'm walking around like a waiter. I'm like, uh, is anybody got the, you got the eight inch cake pan with the, with the eclipse moon? You got it, the green one, the orange one, the yellow one, the blue one? Anybody got the eight inch eclipse? No, I feel like a waiter. 
What am I doing with this thing? So remember, get your cake pan or your little plate. You can be a little waiter, be out there serving your canvas. That's what we do anyway, we serve the canvas. I serve the canvas, okay? I serve you with a, with a, with a platter, a silver platter. Right? Get a little bit more of our paint, fresh white. And then let's come over here and let's do this little guy right about I'm trying to make them as perfect as i can just lining them up with my eye you know what i mean which is not always the most scientific way to do stuff but it's a it's an original painting right it's supposed to be kind of off <laughs> it's supposed to be a little bit off oh dude what if we did one oh on our next painting guys we might be able to fit five we might be able to fit five in there. That'd be really cool. All right, you know what we should do then? Let's extend this guy a little bit further down. All right, we're gonna blend him out and pull him down a little bit further because we've got all this extra room. Little streaks, little things, little here, little there. And then we'll pull this other guy up, right? And that'll fill in our little center section. So it'll still be the same amount on the top and the same amount from the bottom and from the side. A little bit further, Josh, about right there. Okay, now we're gonna come back in, load up the brush, a little bit of white, go around our guy like that. Whoop, I can't even see it so far down there. Oh, we got this orangish reddish. You know what, let's add some more red to it. Let's add some red to the brush with the white. Oh yeah, still not even dark enough. Add some crimson to the brush. That crimson's really gonna make, oh, there we go. There we go. Stay around the edge. A little bit of crimson, a little bit of white, a little bit of red, all on the brush. Got to do that rotation, spin. Oh, look at these. Just gonna be fantastic for our little fall section. And they're gonna crisscross back and forth with those little guys. Gonna be excellent, you guys. A little bit longer here, a little bit shorter there. All the pens, just like the minutes of a clock. Remember, you don't have to be as fast as I am. You really don't have to be. I'm just trying to get it done so we can get the insides done so we can rock and roll with this tutorial and keep it short enough for you guys to want to watch it, right? If they're too long, you're not going to want to watch it. Or you're going to skip through most of it, which makes me sad when you skip through the videos. I don't skip through. I say some really awesome stuff. And you never know when like a gem of knowledge is going to pop out during one of those videos. Get a little bit more of our red, a little bit more of our crimson, a little bit more of our white, all mixed up in here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, dragging it out. There we go, and then we're really gonna stretch it out. So, our red one looks fantastic. Now all we got left is the blue. Really gonna be cool, guys. So, if you wanna get this painting, you can go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and buy this painting right now before I have a chance to finish it, before I have a chance to post it on Facebook to our 267,000 or however many thousands of followers we got over there on Facebook. It's literally insane how many people we got rocking and rolling. And we just broke past 206,000 on Instagram, just growing like crazy. One of our Instagram reels is gone. It's like taken off again. So it's just, uh, it's already at 600,000 plays. Um, from like yesterday, two days ago. It's just crazy, crazy amount of plays. All right, let's get all the red off of this brush. And then we're gonna come back in and we're gonna go back for our last final little Aurora and then we can pop in some scenes. God, it's getting hot up here too. Ah, I gotta see if the air conditioning's on. Hang on, guys. It's just hot to trot in Las Vegas, right? Now we're gonna grab the last little bit of our white. Not like we don't have a lot. We've got a ton of white. You know, our white on the brush, not too much of the red, a little bit of white, just like that, right? Come over here, pop in our last little guy, right there, right there, and right there. And then, that's gonna look really cool. I like it, I like it. Look down just a touch, there we go, just a little. Whoop, a little slip right there. Okay, ready? Now we're gonna come in here with the blue. Ooh, the blue is my favorite. It just makes it so gorgeous. And then if you, the more blue that you have on the brush, uh, on the canvas, the more that it's gonna show. Oh, perfect, okay. Now we're gonna come around here, 
really starts slapping that blue out. It's mixed with a little bit of the green, so it's like this aqua blue color. Very cool. Very light in here, because we already have all that other paint, right? We don't need to mix them both too much. We'll have too much paint on the canvas. Sliding into our blue section. Very neat. I gotta get down here, I can't even see. Can't even see the dang thing. I'm gonna take a little bit more paint, gonna stretch it out a bit. Get those longer streaks as they go out. Oop, there we go. Just like this, you guys. And then we're gonna pull it all out, stretch it out, and then it's gonna look gorgeous. All these little different colors, different things that are happening inside. All right, and then out here, streak them over just a little. All right, let them grow, try to meet each other. There we go. Remember, they're all gonna get a little softer as we go pull them all out. And they'll stretch and grow and this, that, and the other. Oh, just fantastic. That's gonna look really cool, you guys. That's gonna be really neat. All right, I don't think we need the old cake pan anymore. Let's get all the colors off of this brush. And then we'll switch to smaller brushes and really start coming in for these cool little scenes on the inside. So tell me where you're watching from, guys. What's your favorite sandwich? It is hot up here, man. Ah, turn the fan on, but then the fan gets too loud. And if I put the one on above your guys' head, then the camera goes like this, it like shakes back and forth. It's the funniest thing. Funniest thing. Okay, let's see. Let's grab our one inch brush now. Nice soft little one inch brush. Let's just decide where we wanna go. Let's start in our yellow area. I'm just gonna pull it down, trying to stay on the outside of our circle and look how it softens it. Right, makes it a little bit longer, a little bit softer. Those guys can even connect. All right, just dragging them up, having them meet. Why not? Why not? Looks good to me. I like it. They're like reaching and touching. Touching, like that Journey song, loving, touching, squeezing. You know what I mean? That's what they're doing, a little reach. There we go. Slide it off, same angles, so you can't pull it a different way. You pull it the same way that you pulled it with the fan brush. It's being very soft, look at that. Oh, that's so cool. That is so cool. Man, that's neat. All right, just softening it. All right, when we get in here, this is the little tricky part, because I don't really want to touch it a lot. What if we came just a little as bit from the yellow side, then we'll go a little as bit from the other side when we come to that color. There we go. All right, more pressure, stretch it out a little bit further. That's very cool. That's very cool. Now, let's go do our red. I dab the brush off, come back in here, pulling it out, stretching that color out to those dark areas, leaving, it, leaving the canvas sort of dark though. You don't have to do the whole thing in this super bright color, right? doesn't all have to be super bright everywhere. You gotta leave your dark spots. That's why we're on a black canvas, because we want dark spots. We want those deep, dark areas where the color just can't reach all the way to, you know what I mean? Like maybe in the center, it stays very dark in here because we got all these colors coming in from different places and it just can't reach all the way into there before it sort of dissipates, right? Let's come into, we'll do the green this time. Let's start in this little bit right here where it's very, very bright. So it's got two layers of paint on it. So in between those two bits, it's very bright. Okay, now we're pulling more pressure, more pressure, more pressure. Trying to pull it down to meet like this, right? Just changing it just like a clock. Pulling in every direction. That looks very cool. Even if it's a little bit brighter like that, it looks really neat to me. I like it anyway. I'm gonna come over there and pull this way. This will be the, the only the second Four Seasons painting I've ever done. I did one Four Seasons painting on a 24 by 30 canvas, and I split it like, so I can't remember, it was like six inch panels across the, the 24 inches or whatever, I can't remember what it was. My, my math is probably wrong, it's probably, it might be right, but it's probably wrong. Uh, but yeah, I split it all the way across like that, and then um, went down and made a different scene in each one. It was, it turned out really cool. Took a long time for sure. And pull these guys up, softening it down, stretching it out, very neat. And our little auras meet right there, like a little crisscross in the center. You know how you get that uh, from like a super bright light and it overexposes and you get that crisscross of like, of uh, brightness in the center, very cool. Very cool. 
very small in here. I don't want to push too much of the dark color on the brush. I want to keep it very bright. Now, both those guys are so close together that they're just shining so brightly. All right, and then these guys, maybe we take a little bit more of our blue. I'm just going to add a little bit of blue in there. It's probably way too much blue paint, so we're going to have to go back over it with our white. But I want it to be a darker blue, and it mixed a little bit too much with our green. There we go. Look at that. I can just change it. Add a little bit of dark blue into a little bit of the lighter uh, bluish greenish color. Add a little bit of our blue on the edge of our thing here. Just a touch though. Teeniest, tiniest little bit. Because it's going to want to stretch, right? It's going to want to cover over the red, which isn't what we want to do. And don't worry, we're going to fill in the insides of these, but we want to have them sort of retain a circle. Just like that. Now come down here, a little bit more pressure, pulling it out. We'll probably have to go back and finish this part at the very end. There we go. Bing, bang, boom. Stretch it, pull it, line it up, just like our Aurora Borealis, you know what I mean? Now we got this kind of wintry scene, all these different colors, very cool. The only color we're really missing is the purple. The purple, man, the purple. All right. I think that's really neat. I think it looks really neat. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Do we totally mess it up? Do you think it's looking good so far? I had planned on, I'd even asked around to like Bram and some other folks. I said, what do you think I should do? Like all the same scene with just different seasons. You know what I mean? So I have like each tree in the same spot, each cloud in the same spot, whatever. And, or do all different scenes to depict different seasons. And I was like, I wanna do all different scenes, right? Like we could do like a awesome little beach scene out here in the summertime, do a cool little grassy waterfall with some flowers for spring, do a, a cold little uh, a winter scene down here. And then like this really fall foggy, like really cool foresty type of one down here. So that's what I decided to go with. That's what we're rocking and rolling with today. And I'm gonna tell you guys, it's gonna be awesome. But it's okay, we put the fan back on. Let's rock, let's rock and roll, guys. Okay, we're gonna take a small little fan brush. We're gonna start working in our mini tools, right? We went from the bigger fan brush to make it to these little teeny tiny fan brushes like this. Now, what I wanna do is have a couple for our, um, our moons, right? Because we're on these dark canvases. We don't have to do all daytime scenes. You could do a nighttime scene. You could do all sorts of stuff. Right, and for these two green ones anyway, the green and the blue one, we're gonna do nighttime scenes. So it's gonna be like a nighttime spring waterfall with greens and yellows and gorgeous bits of flowers. And then we'll do like a blue, icy blue winter scene. And over here, we're gonna do a, uh, a seascape and then down here, we're gonna do a forest. So these are both gonna be during the day. We're gonna have extra color on the canvas. These will both be at night. No, we could do day during this one, I guess. I mean, it's, we could do day enough. We could do enough. Watch, let me show you how to do it. We're gonna take a little bit of white right on the brush, just like this. Never done this before. Literally making it up as we go, showing you guys you can do the same exact thing right here. Take our little bit, come into our little spring waterfall area, start dumping in clouds, right? This one's obviously backlit in green as it's shown around, right? And so if we're gonna do these monochromatic paintings or trichromatic or quadramatic, if that's even a word, sounds like a, like a, uh, like a rowing machine, the quadramatic. I swear to God, it sounds like a, it sounds like a machine that you would use to row. Watch this, we're gonna do the same, we're gonna use the other side of the brush using the white, come over here. These clouds go perfect for my little seascape that I've got planned over here. And if we just take a little bit of extra color, right? You're like, oh no, what do you do? What happened? You ruined it. You so ruined it. I can't believe you did that to those gorgeous clouds. Which side do you want me to start on? The green side or the yellow side? You guys let me know. We'll do two side by side. Which one should we start on, guys? Let me know. Should we start on the yellow side or should we start on the green side? It is like a rowing machine, quadramatic. It sounds like something for your, for your quads. Can I ask something? Go ahead. Let's start on the yellow side. Everyone else says green, green, yellow, green. Let's see, yellow, green, yellow, green. Why don't we just pick one and just rock and roll? If we go from right to left, you guys can actually see it a little bit better. So we're going to take our yellow and, right, we've already put our P1 up there, guys. What's P1? Tell every, tell all the new people watching what P1 is. All right, we have our, our three P's of painting, and I don't even have my shirt on. What a travesty, right? I still have a Paint With Josh shirt on, just not the Paint With Josh shirt, right? 
P1, paint, right? Now you can't see the second P. The first one is P is, uh, is paint. Now we're gonna come over here with our second P, which is what, guys? You gotta tell me, I'm gonna come back and give you a shout out. Depending on our second P, our P2, how much what? How much puppies? Pressure says Rudy. Oh, Rudy, I saw you and then you shot up there. Let's see, giving Rudy the follow <clears throat> for knowing pressure, right? With our amount of pressure on the canvas, how hard we push in or how lightly we're just trying to just flick it just a little, right? These cool little bits out there. And then we're gonna put a little bit of that color just underneath, right? Maybe pulling it out to the side. You can do whatever you want to make your cloud look however you want it to look. That looks really cool. I like that one. That looks really neat. Now, we're gonna come over here and all I'm gonna do is dab off. Listen, like I'm knocking at the door, right? Just dabbing it on a paper towel real hard. Even pulling out bristles, how hard we're dabbing it on a paper towel. And then we'll come over here and we're very lightly, same thing, with the amount of pressure, we decide how bright it is, how far the, the green goes down, right? Or how far the cloud's gonna grow. And you can do this with the same, with mountains, with trees, with a, with a face. I've never even painted a portrait before, but I guarantee if you use the three Ps on a portrait, it'll help, right? The amount of paint that we're putting on the canvas, the amount of pressure that we're blending with, and our practice, of course, right? Practice, the third P, the most important P. You have to practice. If you don't practice, how can you possibly want to, you know, have anything work for you? if you're not practicing. That's what I wanna know. All right, now, we're gonna start our scene up in our, uh, in our summertime spot very high, very high up in the sky, because it's gonna be like a little waterfall type thing. So I'm just gonna get a little of my white on the brush, then we're gonna go back in here, and it's gonna interact with all the little colors, right? So if we come into here, and we decide, what's it look like for you guys back here on TikTok? We're gonna come in a little bit. We'll come in a little bit on each one. And we'll watch the green one for the first, right? There we go. The pretend is the third P. That's funny. Okay, so we're gonna come in here and let's decide, maybe we had our water fall. It was way back up in here and it just started coming towards us. A little bit here, a little bit there. All right, a little turn. Nothing too crazy. Bam. Not even a full, like not even an S shape. Just a little C shape. C-shaped bit of water, right? Now our waterfall is going to come flying down, the whole thing. So don't worry about it, right? We're going to take this bit, slide it over, back into here, slide our little bit of river that way, slide our little bit of river this way, and all of a sudden you can see it right back in there, right? Now what I'm going to do is take our bit of white that's on the brush, go over to the side and down, over to the side, down, over to the side, down. Don't need a whole lot, right? Don't need a whole lot of stuff. Just like that, very cool. Little bit of waterfall coming out. And then we're gonna take our brush and slide that bit of white backwards, right, right up to the edge, just like that. And that way you have this little bit of tumultuous water as it's coming towards us. And it's almost starting to look all the same, right? So we're gonna grab a little bit more of our white, wipe the brush off on a paper towel, more of our white. And let's say we were coming, let's feed it backwards, right? So we're gonna go back here. Maybe we turned, stay real flat, real flat, just like that. Very cool, right? And then we can add grass and all sorts of stuff around the side of him. And it'll look very neat. Okay, we got a little bit of water there. Let's put in our little flowery falls because this is our springtime one, right? So we gotta have lots of flowers, lots of different colors and different stuff. As our waterfall falls down, the more we pull it down, the longer and longer it gets. I'm not gonna try to touch it all the way down to our bit of aurora, but just like that, it's darker and darker and darker. Don't want these two light colors to connect too much. Very cool. Very cool. Now, all right, now what we're gonna do is add in our little bit of side flowerage with our little half round brush, the Bob Ross half round brush, right? It's, a, it's like a little circular brush, perfect for making bushes with, it's kind of soft, kind of firm, really flicky. It's got a lot of good flickability to it. So don't come up and flick yourself in the head. That's not what you're gonna want. So let's take a little bit of our green, a little bit of our blue, a little bit of our black. We're gonna come down in here like this. A little black, keep it dark, right? A little blue, a little green, a little green. 
dab it in. So we got a little bit of extra stuff into here, right? Now, what if we came down, there was a bit of bush back in here, so we can't even see where this, this river even comes from. And then that bit of bush just starts falling all the way down, right? Where do you want the little flowery arms to grow? Totally up to you. How far does it pop out into your waterfall? Again, totally up to you. As long as you hide some of that stuff back there, you don't even have to paint the grass behind it because it's all in the clouds and in the mystery, right? Shoot, we could even have, look at this. Look at this. I just had a cool idea. Look at this thing right here. You guys, we could have it another falls coming down from back here. Bang. Double falls, just like that. Add a little bit of difference back in there. And then very lightly, we're gonna add a little bit of fog anyway, a little mist as it's coming down. But you get this very cool thing staying right on the edge, falling down. Right? We need to make it real bright up there though. And that way it'll grab your attention. You get that first little bit of brightness there, right on the edge. Very cool, very, very cool guys. Remember, you can go over and search for number 777 if you want to buy this painting. This is number 777 on my career. And if you ask me, that's a lot of stinking paintings. That's a lot of paintings. There we go. A little bit of mist way back there. It looks like a little mustache. We've got to work on it a little bit more. A little bit more pressure. More pressure. There we go. Now we can't really tell. Now I'm going to get a little bit of our yellow and a little bit of our green together, right? That's why we sort of put them back here together. That way I didn't have to taint my other little bit of yellow. And we're gonna dab these guys together just a little bit, brightening it up, smallest little bit on all sides of the brush, right? Trying to keep the brush pinned, almost like a, like a little chisel, at least as thin as you can get it to go down. All right, and then we're gonna come in with that extra bright green. And it's almost not, it's either too much the same or it's too dark, right? So let's go back, get a little bit more of our yellow, brighten it up a little bit, come back in here. There we go, hiding a little bit of that river into the mist. Get our cool little bits of grass start coming down. Very neat, very neat, guys. And then you can highlight all sorts of your little bushes with different things, right? So I don't wanna to put too much back here because we're gonna add those thick bits of our foreground bushes with our black, our blue, and our green again. Both the green colors, just dabbing them up. Come in here, we're gonna decide where our, our edge of our little bit is, how much of our mist is back there, how much of our grass we're gonna see. Maybe just underneath that grass was a teeniest little bit of dark line just to help us. And I'll spread it out in a second. We're going to come over here and just dip them down. Come over our, our little bit of waterfall, right? As all of our little flowers come down like that. It's going to be gorgeous. Just going to be gorgeous. So this little dark line I was telling you about, it almost looks like if you can keep it dark enough and thin enough, it'll look like a piece of um, shadow underneath our land, right? And we've got to go back over the top of it with that little bit of grass, just enough. Darken it down just enough to where it looks like it's kind of popped up in front of that little bit. Very cool, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna come in with our, our uh, other half round brush, right? And this is the more dirty one that we usually use for making the, the um, mushy bits, our dark shadowy things, but I found out that it makes better highlights than anything else. So let's come in with some gorgeous little colors. Why don't we get our, our cad yellow, our bright red, we're gonna pop them right over the top of this guy. Because this one's spring, right? You gotta have some gorgeous bright flowers on there. So maybe we'll change it over here. A little bit of our brighter yellow. Dabbing them in, letting them roll down wherever they wanna start growing, right? Very cool. Very cool. I even wanna get, maybe we could do some green ones in there too. We'll put a few more little yellow bits back up here. Don't wanna to do too much. A little bit of crimson, get that darker reddish. Our little mauve-ish color back here in the quote unquote shadows. Very cool. Maybe a little bit more of our bright red. Come up here. Just little dabs onto the canvas. And if you touch it too hard, then it's going to make mud. So if you're touching it and it's not coming off, you got to thin the paint down a little bit or get a little bit more on your brush and tap it with a little less pressure. All right. A lot of the times I've got a, I've got a ton of paint on the brush, just a chunky bit, but I'm only touching it with the smallest amount of pressure. And by touching it with that small amount of pressure, I'm just getting these little things to dab off. I feel like an itch in my hair. Oh, oh, that feels good. Woo, okay. Let's see, my hair's probably all messed up now, but it's okay. Let's come in here. Let's make a few more decisions on our colors, right? We could do like a gorgeous bit of blue. Watch this. 
a little bit of blue and white together. I really got to darken it up though. That white really wants to make it bright. Here we go. Like some blueberry bush flowers back in here, right? Come back in there. A couple little things, nothing too much, nothing too crazy. Because then they're really going to stand out. If you have too many in too many places, then it's really going to stand out. That's why we like to alternate back and forth. So let's get all this blue off now. Because the blue is just like one little touch. It's all you need. One little touch of blue out in there. Very cool. Now, we've got all of this bit that we can cover. We don't want to go too green because our whole scene is green, right? Let's get a little more of our yellow ochre. It's like a darker yellow, like more of a goldish color. Right? As it dips down, falls over all those little bits of blue, little different things. Let's go back, maybe a little red, little yellow ochre back in here. Just having them dip down grow down very cool little springtime waterfall portal scene if you ask me if you ask me very cool so remember guys you can get this painting before anyone else go to paintwithjohn.etsy.com and if you like that scene we've got about three more that are going to be equally as awesome coming up right okay now let me wash off all these brushes so we don't have to contaminate the scenes I figured this one might be a bit of a long stream because we're gonna do four paintings, basically. And that first one, I don't even know how much, how long that took, how long did the first one take? Now, we're gonna come back over here. We're gonna grab up a little bit of white, just a little bit, a little bit of our cad yellow, bring it down here, a little bit of that, nothing too crazy. We're painting on yellow, so we don't need to have too much yellow in the brush. But if you just have all white, then it tends to get too bright white, you know what I mean? Okay, so let's add our, our bit of ocean way back here. In order to add a bit of ocean, I almost forgot. Let's grab our little mall stick. And it's sort of gonna be difficult because now we have all this texture right here. So let's, let's change our mall stick into a very, very, very small mall stick. I'm gonna hold it up like this. Just about, yeah, we gotta go up a little higher. About that high right there. Oh, you gotta be straight. You gotta be straight, don't move it, oh goodness. Oh, okay, that's all I need. There's one little bit of straightness back there. Then I can do the rest. We can fill the rest in very lightly, just pulling off to the side. That's all you need is a little light area over there. And then the more paint that we drop on the canvas over here, the more we're gonna use, right? Covering up those clouds, don't need them. Look at all that yellow and stuff just interact with itself. Look at all those little dark areas and light areas. So gorgeous, taking a little bit of it like this. Sliding it across, sliding it that way, reaching almost to the edge. Don't want to go all the way to the side, just almost there, right? And that's why we cut those clouds off like that, because you can put them anywhere behind your ocean, right? If we're, you can imagine they go all the way back and around like that. So let's take a little bit more of our white yellow mix on our brush, just a touch, because we don't need a whole lot. And we're going to add our little mustache way back here, right? Going to come down, up, and down, just like that little mustache. Little smiley face mustache way off in the distance, right? And this guy all the way back there. Start to drop in little bits. And then over here, you start sliding it back. Little things, little things. All the way to the edge, right? Not going outside the circle. That's not what we want. We don't want to go outside the circle. Let's see if we can get any bit of brightness. There we go. Bit of brightness back in here. Just like that. Leaving those dark areas though, because you gotta have the dark and the bright together. You can't have it just be all bright or be all too dark, right? Now a little bit of flattening. Stretch it to the side. Don't want it to go outside the circle. There we go, guys. Just soft. Make it extra dark underneath. Now here comes the fun part. Back to that white. Back to our little bit of white and yellow. Then we're going to come up here and let's decide our bit of wave crash right there. And then we're going to start rotating down, pulling our little bits, falling over. Nothing too crazy, right? And we don't want it to be too dang big because we don't want it to crash outside of our scene. We're going to grab the end over here, slide it back just like that. And this is the fun part. We're going to hit it this angle and we're going to hit it at this angle right there. And you're like, what have you just done? That's not even, that doesn't even make sense. Right? Just trust in the process. Come over here, start throwing it out. And remember, you gotta leave room for your bit of um, mist and fog and stuff. So, not too much of a crazy wave. 
just like that. Don't even need to have too much color or anything. Just extending it down. Very cool. Very cool. Now we're going to put our eye in back here. Move it just a little. Again, it's going to grow. And then here, here's our very small little bit that we have to do where we slide our water all the way back to that last little piece of color, right? If you leave that little dark section underneath there, then that acts as a little shadow over the top of the wave. And I told you, boop, we'd line right up with that little thing, didn't we? Didn't I say that? Didn't I say, all right, the more and more we go to the side, the more and more you turn your brush, just like our edges of our thing, just like the edge of a clock, right? Come down here, pulling it off this side, almost all the way to the edge, softly as we can. So you have that little teeny tiny dark separator, right? Now in here with our brightness, that's where we're gonna line up and start coming down and decide what our wave looks like, right? And you can already see the little peak, that little ridge of water where the two pieces meet up. That's fun, right? That's the fun part. So let's take this brush our one inch brush like that and come back in here just start mixing it up and there's not a whole lot of room and it wants to grow so remember you got to keep our dark separator and the more you mix it the darker your eye wants to become as well with all the rest of the paint underneath it so if you want to keep it bright don't over mix don't over mix it right now over here if we had our darkness and we had our bit of foam come back and it starts to just suck itself back right here starting to line up Pull it over in the other direction. And then maybe it comes down a little bit further. All little different things that are going on back here, right? Little bits of action in our water. Light, light pressure. Light, light, light pressure. And we got to pull in the right directions, right? So we came back like this. Now all of a sudden we're going to have to start to flick upwards, but not straight up, not right away. Start them rotations and then we go back. We get longer and longer and flatter and flatter to the side until poof, we line up with our little, our bit of our wave over here, right? And then it's all about the angles of these guys. How much is it rotating when you get way up in the inside? Is it curving real far? Right? Are we trying to get all of our little bits to come and hit that piece of our eye? That's not what we want. We don't want them to hit the eye right away. All right, take these guys, make sure we get the right angle as we curl them down and pull them out straight. And that'll help our wave look more and more and more uh, round as you work your bit of sand and, and foamy action of water into this round circle, right? We're not overdoing it. We're not adding too much paint. There we go. Then you decide when it looks good to you, right? Very cool. By leaving this area dark underneath, it creates that shadow of the thing, by the way. In case you missed that part. Now we're gonna go back in, grab a little of our blue, a little of our brown, actually. Now let's do that. Since we're on that yellow part of our canvas, let's grab a bit of our browns, right? A couple of brown colors in there. A bit of our black, just to keep it nice and dark. That's gonna be our dark separator. As we come up underneath and we start tapping up into the wave, right? Into that bit of whiteness, that water that's crashing over. And then as we come down, we really start smashing on it down here, because this is all of our crashing bit of watery foam. You go up above your horizon, and then we're gonna go back and mix it just like a cloud. And remember, leave a little bit of space. It's gonna wanna grow. It's gonna wanna grow down. Our foam comes down and hits right there. All that crash, right? Let's get a little of our liquid white, a little of our titanium white, and a little of our uh, cad yellow as well. Gonna have enough liquid white though in order for it to feel like it's wet and sloppy. And that way it'll transfer off the brush easily and onto the canvas, right? We're gonna come over here right on top of those shadows, not covering them, right? So not like this. I'm gonna show you right here. All right, right here on the thing, we're gonna push in and make our little shadowy bit of our wave, right? Little arc. Now, when I go to do the highlights, I'm not trying to cover the entire bit. I'm trying to go on top of those shadows so you leave a bit of brightness on top and a bit of shadow on the bottom, right? So I'm gonna show you just like this. We're gonna turn the brush, go on top of those shadowy areas, slapping up into the canvas, leaving little bits of craziness. That's what you want. You want it to look all nuts and weird like that. Don't try to make it look all the same. And then we're gonna ride our shadows down, just like that, staying on the top half of them. So the bottom half is still dark, all right? And then over here, 
I'm just gonna dab a few times with our brightness, leaving a little bit of darkness. And I used to leave them just like that. And if yours, if you look at it and you go, man, that looks wicked awesome cool, I'm gonna keep it just like that. You go ahead and do that. But we're gonna take this with our one inch brush, and just very softly come in here and try to get as close to our eclipse edge as possible with that watery foam, look at that. And then just the teeniest, tiniest little touches as we start to climb up. We're not gonna go all the way up to the top though, because as the top is, is curling over, it's more focused, right? Down here, it's already crashed and hit and turned into spray and all that other stuff. So you don't have to really worry about it. Now, the most fun part about the seascapes is coming in with our watery spray. So let's take a little bit of our liquid white, a little of our titanium white, put it way out here on the edge, right? And then we're gonna come off the end of the palette. I don't know if you guys can even see it like this and just flick it onto the canvas, just like that. You wanna get that spray and that water to fly out and it'll make all these cool little things. And don't worry about it, because inside of our, uh, I mean, around the edges of our portals and stuff, we're gonna do the same exact thing. So if you get a little bit of, of uh, you know, overspray, as we call it in the construction industry, a little overspray, it's not gonna make a difference because you want that overspray out there as your bit of stars and galaxy around our, our little aurors, right? Very cool. And even if you get it in your sand, down like that, it looks like little bits of, of glowing seashells or something, right? Something cool. Let's take this guy actually, just pull this down just a littlest bit. See all those little liquid white bits? They streak down like that, slide them away because that liquid white is so watery. It's so watery, slide it back and we wanna leave our dark separator inside, but I didn't add any extra paint to the canvas. I just used those little liquid white spray bits to add our little bit of sandy, watery sheen. See that? And now I'm gonna come back in for our final little thing, and throw our last little bit of spray on there. Dang, just like that. And you can overdo it right here. You can overdo it, like, doesn't matter. As long as they don't clump together so much that you can't see around the stars or see that there are multiple things and they're not just all clumpy bits of watery spray, right? Smallest little things, smallest, teeniest, tiniest little bits of paint. You can get them to fling off the edge, you're gonna be in good shape, right? So can anybody tell me how long we've been streaming for? Because it feels like forever. I've done two paintings so far on this one little thing. I think I started at 10, 15-ish, close, right? So it's been about an hour. It's been about an hour, Is that made, does, that, does that track to everybody? Has it been about an hour? I don't even remember what time we started. No idea. All I know is this one's turning out fantastic and I don't wanna, don't wanna do anything to ruin it. All right, firstly, we gotta come back in here and just come and make it a little bit softer. I almost forgot to do that. That would be a cardinal sin. There we go. A little soft. Right? It just blends those little brush hairs and different things. There we go. Makes them a little softer, a little more out of focus. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Now, wash this guy off. We're going to make sure you guys are in down into the orange section so we can see, or the red section anyway. And then we'll do this. Bam, coming out. How do you guys like that? Look at all those stars everywhere. Woo! goodness. Okay, we're going to come down over into here, and we'll zoom in right down there. That's where we want to be. That's where we want to be, guys. So now you guys can buy this painting for $400 on the dot. $100 for every portal. $400. Free shipping, free worldwide shipping everywhere, right? And it's already 40% off. It's normally 666 for this size, and that brings it down to 400 on the dot. So, I think it's a good deal if you ask me. Plus you get free shipping, tracking, all that stuff. Mm. Man, that seascape came out really good. I like that. Okay, now what I wanna do for the fall scene is kinda take from Bram a little bit and uh, really make it, like really use that color that's in there, right? And so, 
we're just gonna, instead of making clouds per se, we're gonna make like a bright bit of just color in there, All right? So let's get a little of our white. And remember, it's gonna interact with whatever we have in there. So make sure there's not too much, right? And we're gonna come in here and just make a mess. Let's go like this. Everywhere, just see what happens, right? We're gonna look and we're gonna see what's gonna happen with this guy as we start to blend it and mix it around, right? Well, we can even do it like a cloud, start blending it little circles, pushing it out, letting it mix with all that red, right? The more pressure we have, so in here where it's very bright and we wanna move it, we can push it down, spreading it out, coming back in, just making this little bit of softness out there. You know what I mean? Little softness, is it a cloud? Is it a bit of light? Is it, what, what is it? What is it out there? Right? Very, very cool. That's what it is to me. So we don't want to go too far. Oh, I just got the best idea. Oh, it's going to have a pathway that comes right up here and goes right out there. I see it. I can see it in the paint already. Can you guys see that? Like I'm going to put like a little bit of red in here, just from way back here. You can see this path that just starts to come and it's here. Oh, I can see it right there. There it is. Just obviously we're gonna blend it out and do all this other stuff, but there's a little path back in here and it's gonna lead us out of this little foresty bit, all that brightness, right? You can take a little bit more of our white, you can make it a little bit brighter, get rid of where our path was, a little brighter over here, a little darker over there. Mix it up, mix it up, mix it up, mix it up, out to the edge, leaving our little dark separator though. The bigger your dark separator, the more it's gonna look like we're looking into something. The smaller your dark separator, the more it's gonna make it look round. Right? It's gonna make it look like we're, we're looking at a globe or an orb versus looking through a hole. Just like that. It's starting to look like Vecna's place over here, guys. So remember, you're gonna have to name this painting. We can't just call it Four Seasons. That's lame. Can't just call it the Four Seasons. So start coming up with a name. What do you think this painting should be called? And I'm gonna start making this brown just a little bit brighter and brighter and brighter, pushing it further off in the distance. Just like this, a little of my yellow ochre in here so we make this cool color. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a neat bit of brown. Now off here, way out in the back, say there was a couple little bits, just far away trees, way out there, a little here, a little there, All right, some thin, some thick, a lot of little bits. There's a little thin little color, way off in the distance. Yeah, you barely see them. That's what's up right there. You barely see them, and then you can't tell where the base of them are, right? You don't know where it is. In all this mixture of this foggy mist, where are the base of those trees? I don't know. Now, all we have to do is start making this color that we made a little bit darker and darker and darker. So, we come in with our next bit of paint. We're also going to mix it in with that bit of paint. All right, just mixing it up. We need this little bit of brownness. And we'll come in here, and if we had our bit of path, let's say our path came back there. Let's just put it into our heads in that way. Right there, that's where I want it to be. So, very softly, very small off in the distance. And then the more we get, the longer and longer and longer and longer and longer strokes we get. And just like that, the more we work at it back there, the, the softer and, and lighter it should become as well. And if it doesn't, grab a little bit of our light color or our white and just mix it in back here until it starts becoming lighter and lighter and lighter. Take a little bit of it, push it up, push it up, push it up, push it up. There we go. Then we can always blend out whatever we don't want as it gets darker and darker and darker up here. Making our little thing. It's gonna look very cool. Very cool, very cool. And then we decide what we want it to look like, of course. Of course. So a little more of our white, a little more of our brown. It's almost the same dang color. More of our yellow ochre then. There we go. Change it up a bit. Oh yeah, I like that. That's, that's nice right there. Okay, very cool. Now, don't want to go too crazy with the paint layers and stuff. And then we can always go back and make it darker, make it lighter, stretch it out, pull it over here, mix it up. Where's the end of the path? Who knows? It's way out there in the distance, right? Way out there. A little bit of light areas, a little bit of dark areas, and then again down here with that dark separator, 
making it very, very small and not trying to go around the outside of it. That's very cool right there. Okay, now let's go back to that dark colored brush. Where's my dark colored brush? Is it this one? And come back over here and get some more of our dark browner paint. A little bit darker. We're going to mix it into our thing and we're going to test and see. Hopefully it's a little darker and it's a little bit thicker. Oh yeah. And then we can decide how far our little tree branches want to come down, right? So we'll get back in here into our little pile. Come back over here. Maybe we had one over there. We had one coming in from straight above too. Back in there, just crisscrossing, pushing through all these other little guys. All right, way off there. There's another one over here. They don't all have to be the same height. They don't all have to be the same thickness. You can have them be super thin. You can have them be super thick. All depends. And then the darker and darker, the, the more and more we come to us, the thicker and thicker and thicker they should become, right? Because they're getting closer to us. They're becoming bigger and thicker and darker trees. We're gonna crisscross in front of our path, just like that too. Ooh, wicked, wicked. Try not to cover up every little tree, but I'm trying to make sure we have a lot of distance that we can walk around and go back through. And don't worry about that guy out there. We can always fix him. We can always fix him. Actually, sometimes it looks cool when they come up out of the portal, right? Very neat. Very neat. Boom, 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 boom. Wicked, you guys. Cool. All right, let's come in here with our last little tree trunk. There's a little softer guy way back there. A bigger guy over here. I mean, all depends. All we're doing is adding depth and distance in the in the painting and just pushing it off, spreading it out, way out there. Right now, we're going to add a few little bits around the bottom, and we're going to call the fall one done. That's literally it. A little bit over here, pulling around the side, kind of make the bottoms of them sort of mysterious. Right? What's where's the base? We're kind of kind of mixed up in all this little bit of fogginess in here. And so we can't really tell where the base is. And it doesn't have to be the most perfect thing because you can just go back and make it all foggy and stuff, right? Very cool. These guys down here, you take them and pull them. You can take them and pull them. Over there, a little softer, a little here, a little there. Pull them straight down into the mist, a little over to the side. You get these cool little soft little bits. You can't tell where the heck the bottom is. And that's the fun part to me. When you just can't tell where the bottom is. Let's see if we can't scoop up this dark paint and get it out of the out of our auroras. Come back in with a little bit more of our pinky color. And just like that, get rid of that old guy. Very cool. Last little bit of our brush. Pulling it out, trying to make it just as soft as the rest, but not flick any of the other little things over there, right? That's a cool, I love that, guys. I don't even really want to put too many branches. If we put too many branches, it's not going to look the same. It's going to, like, lose that cool, spooky, deep look in there. That's just wicked. So, remember, we're about to be done with fall, guys. So, let's come in here. Few little bits, a couple little branches here, there, and everywhere, right? <laughs> little branchy trees. And what I call them? I call them Brammy trees. I was saying to Bram, I was like, I'm gonna do a couple little Brammy trees like your trees, where he just kind of slides them off and shoots them out to the side like that. It's a cool looking tree, right? Very easy to do, cool little shape. A couple little sticks, very neat. And a couple little going out here, going over this other way. Popping off that side, over there. Maybe they crisscross back and forth between each other. Very neat. A couple ones like that. And that's my favorite guy that lives right out there that just reaches out and pokes you as you walk by. That's my favorite old branch. A couple little guys over here. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. All right, we don't want to fill them all up. We don't want to crisscross them too much. At least I don't. A couple little guys everywhere. And of course, the guys that are bigger in the front, they got bigger branches. That's very cool. These guys over here. There we go. 
just like this. Wicked. And we decide what it looks like, right? How many branches go everywhere? That's totally up to you. So why don't we take this guy, pop him out over there. Another guy over here. That guy a little bit thicker. Maybe he goes out a little further. Who knows? Very cool. All right, we're done with fall. We got one more scene to go, guys. That was so easy to do a little thing like that. So simple. A little bit of just bare fall branches. Awesome. Just awesome. All right, let's get some washing brushes though. We gotta wash some tools. So you guys gotta tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And I might just do a lot more little fall scenes like this on full size canvas with just some soft colors like that. If that, if you guys like this one, let me know in the comments because I'll do more tutorials like that. That is so simple and easy. And uh, it literally took us what, five minutes to do that whole thing and, and I'm going slow. We could knock out paintings like this in 15 minutes. 15 minutes, literally throw some color on there, put our dark bits of tree trunks and branches and make them darker and fatter as they come closer. Right, that's how it goes. So simple, so easy. Do you guys like that one? Let me come check the comments here. Let's see. I love the blue section. Now before I do anything, I wanna make sure it's really blue. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of my blue. I'm gonna come in here. And we're really gonna darken up the blue around on the inside of this guy like this. Right, really make it dark. A lot of blue color and then we're gonna really push it because I want it to really be dark and really be blue. And if there's not enough blue under color or if it's mixed in with too many of our colors, right, then it's not gonna be the same. There we go. There we go. A little bit of blue back in here. And then once we go over it with our white paint, it's really gonna shine through so crazy bright. Okay, that's gonna be fantastic. Now, it looks as though we've sort of need to fix just this one little piece right here. Hang on. Sorry, sorry. Right here. Bang, it got a little bit like out of shape, sort of. Yeah, right there. A little bit out of shape, our old guy. So, come around here, just on the one side, make it a circle again before we continue on, right? We make it more difficult if we try to do it later. Come back with our brightness, slide it out, a little bit brighter white color, just pure white paint, just letting it interact with whatever paint, uh, whatever colors are underneath. Very soft, just like that. Really bright. Woo! Really bright. Now we're gonna take all that blue that's on this other brush. It should help this guy soften his own self. There we go. I don't even want to soften it too much. It's gorgeous, just like that. Fantastic, okay. Now, we're gonna come into the inside. We're gonna make this gorgeous bit of blue, wintry scenes. Let's get a little of our white paint. We're gonna have these pretty clouds. Oh, we gotta have a mountain back there. So let's do our clouds up from this angle, coming down. It'll be like, just like a giant, giant old bit of puffy cumulus nimbus cloud back up in there, right? A little bit slightly different angle. And we're gonna come back in with our brush, just like this, and with that amount of pressure, right? Everybody knows the, pre the pressure, the pressure. Are you going for a job interview and you're stressed and you can't sleep? Hey, we just got a sale, baby. That's what's up right there. I'm gonna have to go check it here in a second. But have you ever gone to, you know, you got a job interview the next day, you can't sleep, you're under so much pressure, right? You got all this pressure, you got, you got a deadline you gotta meet and you just can't do it, that much pressure, right? Or very light little pressure, all depends. All depends on what you want yours to look like, right? Very cool, let's check that sale real fast. Let's see guys over here. And, oh no, somebody else got it besides Kay. No, I'm just kidding, Kay got it. Kay got it, it's coming to you Kay. It's gonna be heading to OK, where Kay lives, so. Let's see, let's get a little bit more of our white onto the brush, add a few little bit more highlights because I love doing the winter scenes like at night. And if you do a night winter scene, I would think you'd have this gorgeous little bit of bright moon out there, right? Which we could have done and we probably should have done beforehand, but we didn't. So we're gonna mix up our little bit of white even softer than before. 
right? Not trying to let it stretch, not trying to let it blend all the way out, just so softly. And then you get brighter areas, you get darker areas. And the more and more pressure we use, the darker and more, you know, the more blue paint it interacts with, the more it'll change and become dark. Very cool. Man, we could just do a whole peak of a mountain, throw some clouds in at the bottom, call that a winter scene, be done. All right, let's see. I gotta get our little moon, which means I need my smallest little filbert brush that we have out and using right now. Little guy like that, it's a little brush, just has a little bit of paint on the, on the one side. And we're gonna come up here and we're gonna push right in there. And the bigger you push, the bigger it's gonna be. But if you push in all the way and rotate around, you make this cool little moon right out there almost a perfect circle every time without even doing much right just like that and the more and more you go out the bigger you push the more you spread whoop there we go and you make it into this gorgeous little circle just like that oh and then if you pull away and you get that cool little bit of a uh, dark shadow in there Sometimes it looks like the little dark spots on the moon too. Just tap at it. A couple little things, but you get this far off moon way out in the sky. Don't need our filbert brush anymore. That's literally the only thing we use it for to make that gorgeous little moon. So tell me where you're watching from guys. What's your favorite sandwich? Well, I just take a breather here real quick. Oh, that's the fun bit. And take our black and blue, mix it up together on the palette. Come over here like this with our palette knife and let's decide just start dropping it on, leaving little jaggedy areas, turning it up. Ooh, that's a cool looking mountain right there. That's gonna be a spiky old mountain. Right? Look at all these little details, just by using our knife vertically. Coming up, popping a little bit up, having it come down. Now we'll turn it sideways, really push, push all the rest of the paint off the knife, and that's all you really need. Right, we'll come in with our one inch brush, and it's really gonna wanna grow. We're using a one inch brush in an eight inch circle. You don't have a lot of room. So based off of our pressure, Right, we decide how far the mountain comes down, which direction it starts sliding in, how far these little bits, how much we're pulling, how much pressure, how much we're mixing it in with the bit of cloud behind it, what's remaining, what's gonna be you know, blended away. All these little things you gotta worry about, all with our pressure, right? So, a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, back in here, just like that, a little bit of sky blue, Mix it up, grab a little of our black or a little bit more dark blue, but our black will help dull it down, right? So that way it's sort of like a bluish grayish color versus a, uh, a dark blue, right? So we've got our, our dark shadows right there. And then we'll throw our highlights over here, mixing up the smallest bit of blue inside these highlights, just so that paint isn't pure bright white, right? And then we'll have a much brighter section and a much darker section of our mountain back there. Very cool. So I'll take our blue like this, gonna come in here, that little bit, we're gonna put it away from our bit of our moon, wherever you think the moon might be, put it away from there, drag it down. Maybe it's got these little vertical streaks of shadows that fly down through the bit of mountain. Don't have to have a whole lot. We'll come back here to our white, come over here, zip, zap, zing. Little teeny bits of pressure right angle, not trying to force it in. These cool little bits start coming down and you start to build your mountain. Maybe we got these little, whatever these little striations are. I love them, these little vertical bits of our mountain. Very cool, just like that. That's not a mountain that looks like it's easily climbable right there, let me tell you. All right, I'm gonna come over here. Not trying to cover up all of our shadows, not trying to reveal every piece of highlight, right? It's not everything is gonna be seen by every piece. Let's get a little bit of our brightness. What if we came over here? There's like a little ridge. Pull that ridge straight down. Oh yeah. As long as you have that little bit of light, a little bit of darkness off the back. And it gets darker and darker and mixes away from the sun or the moon. The sun or the moon. A little bit of our darker color even as we mix back in here. It gets real dark back over there. Oh yeah, look at that. That's what you want to see. That's what I want to see anyway. A little bit of our dark come down in here just to feed in those little areas with a little bit of our dark texture so it's all the same thickness of paint and be able to feel this guy when we get done. So cool, maybe it comes down here, hits a little flat area and starts to slide off. All depends on what you want yours to look like, right? Come down there, maybe we slide off this, maybe this whole thing is just a, 
just a shadowy mountain. God, it sure is gonna be now. This is gonna be so cool. Just gonna be one snowy mountain to represent our wintry season. Very neat. All right, I'm gonna come over here. Give me that little area. Got a little bit of brightness. So take our bright color, same angles, swiping it down over here. All right, maybe our little bit of bright came out across our shadows over there even, right? Just a little bit longer, a little bit flatter, a little bit here, a little bit there. And then we'll take a little bit of darker color, come straight underneath, add that little bit of darkness underneath there and you get that little ledge hanging off the side. So cool, guys. All right, come back in, a little bit of our shadowy color, a little bit of our dark color, a little bit of shadow, a little bit of darkness. And the darkness is just the black and the blue. It's the, the color that we made our mountain out of, right? Don't wanna have it be too bright, that's for sure. Too bright is bad. So a little bit of dark, there we go. Let it mix down in, get our little shadows, our little cliff. What's happening down in there, it's very neat, very neat. Now, just wanna soften our little bit of mountain as we come up here. And it's just gonna push some of these little bits of, of texture out of focus, which is exactly what I want. I don't want it to be all textured, all thick everywhere. That's not what a mountain looks like to me. Right? We came straight down, so we're pulled straight down very, very, very lightly. This takes a lot of our third P, guys. And if you don't have a lot of the third P, don't try to come up and do this to your mountain because you're gonna hate me for it when you get done, right? Such a light amount of pressure determines how softly you can touch that little bit of mountain back there. So softly, right? If you touch it too hard, you're gonna mush all the paint. It's gonna all disappear and make it come down a little bit more and just kind of feed in and connect and just for my brain it's got to feed down a little bit more like that but you got to have that such a small and small amount of pressure and it takes a lot of practice to get that small amount of a pressure okay so don't worry about it if you go too crazy just don't go up and touch every piece of your mountain with all of that paint on it and your brush right this guy we had a little ridge maybe we had a little piece down here what would it look like if we just pulled it straight off Right? And then we started to feed it that way. Ready? All the pens, even little bits, little things. Our shadowy ridge is like a cool little thing in there. It's awesome. That is awesome. So we come in with our brush again, just softening any little bits of those new little things of paint, pulling from the edges like we had it, sliding it back out. And then just very lightly coming in with a little bit of tapping. We don't want to tap so hard that we disrupt our circle, right? But tapping enough that we're mixing that paint with the colors underneath, just like we did with our, our clouds, right? You can even come in and start to mix it just like this, like a cloud, showing some bits of fog, some bits of, of uh, bright area, and different things all throughout the thing, right? And come in here like this with a bit of our cloud into that softness that we just made, not up into the thick bit of mountain. That's going to hurt. If we go up all the way up into there, it's really going to hurt us, right? Leaving a little bit, maybe up into here, a little bit of darkness back up into our next bit of texture, right? A little bit extra paint. So we need this stuff to be a bit brighter than our cloud off in the distance. It's a little closer to us. Got to have it stay bright. And grab it, start to push it. Don't want it to go outside of our circle. Right, gotta keep it inside the eclipse. Look at this, grab the top, bring it down. Look how we can just drag it around and do little different things all based on our pressure with it, right? We already put the paint up there. We've already got our P1. So based on P2, look at that, guys. Holy cow. Man, it's just like a, it's like a, just a, it just makes me cold. I can't, I'm just shivering. I'm just shivering already, just at how cold this scene is. A little bit of darkness, a little bit of brightness, a little bit of things every which way. Man, that is a cool mountain, you guys. That is cool. Okay, what do you think of that mountain back here? That is, I love this. I love them all. I can't stop looking at this whole piece, guys. It's so freaking awesome. Here you go. You want to see the whole smash? Here we go. Let's come in. How do I get rid of these comments? Oh, there we go. Sorry. There we go, guys. Boom. We got the whole painting right there excellent k likes it so as you can see we have from uh, top left to right you got spring summer and then you're gonna go down to fall in the red and obviously over to uh, winter in the blue 
So, one of my favorite pieces of all time, I would think. And we did it with no tape, right? We didn't put any tape down. We didn't prep anything. There's no gesso. There's no anything that we had to remove. We literally took a, a paper plate or a cake pan and put our undercolors down, made our circles, right? So I try to make it literally as easy as possible. And that way the most amount of people will do it, right? If it's too hard, people won't do it. Why do you wear gloves, Josh? I wonder. <laughs> I wonder why. Well guys, this one turned out fantastic. Man, I can't get over, I can't stop looking at it, and I can't wait to see your version of it. Make sure you send it into facebook.com slash paintwithjosh or instagram.com slash paintwithjoshk, and pff, you guys better hurry, because I want to see them. Send them in. So, other than that, thank you guys for being here, thank you for watching the video, and until I see you guys again next time, take care, have the rest of a good day, and ba pow ba boom That's a take for you. Hang on, we got we got to cut this whole part out of the video now. This whole part is wasted, and this is my this is my 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 signal to myself. So if you're ever watching, and I've missed it a couple of times, if you're ever watching a YouTube video and you see me do this, I was supposed to cut out everything that you just saw, so you're not supposed to see that. So if you ever see me do this in a video, turn it off and don't look, because you're not supposed to watch that part. Okay? Okay. Here we go. We're gonna set these down, and this is how we're gonna rock it. Here we go. Hey guys, welcome to Paint with Josh. Today we did a gorgeous fork. I was going to say four color, and I was going to say four scene, and I was going to say four portal, and I was going to say four seasons. Let's decide what we're going to say first. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did... That was bad. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. What's happening, guys? Ho now. Hey, now. <laughs> okay, over here. Let's do it again. Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a gorgeous 22 by 28 inch canvas using the four... Se using the four seasons? <laughs> that was a bad clap. Here we go. Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a gorgeous 22 by 48 inch. Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did this gorgeous 22 inch by 28 inch black canvas with a lot of action happening on it. Uh, we, oh God. All right, that's it. I'm going downstairs. You guys have fun. You just sit there. Laugh it up. Yeah, laugh it up. So funny, isn't it? It's so funny how we just, we just mess it up. Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today with this gorgeous. Tw this is ridiculous. I I'm not even supposed to be doing this part anyway. What are you doing, Josh? Hang on. Hang on. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Well, guys, this one turned out fantastic. I cannot wait. Physically can't. I'm hurting, waiting to see your version of this painting. Send it into Facebook or Instagram. I can't wait to see it. And, uh, man, just had so much fun. I thank you guys for tuning in and watching. And until I see you again, I... <laughs> I had it. I was so there. Oh, I'm so there. Here we go. One more time. Hi, well, <clears throat> just 22 by 28 inch four season painting with four different colors. Very. <laughs> hey guys. Wow. Hey now. Hi guys. <clears throat> Hi guys. Welcome back to. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hi there. Welcome. <clears throat> Hey, welcome back to Paint with Josh. What's going on? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Hi. Hey, guys. Hi, welcome back to Paint with... Hi there. Hey there, what's happening? Welcome back to Paint with Josh. Blah, blah, blah. Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did this gorgeous 22 by 28 inch scene. It turned out fantastic. Four seasons, four colors, four different scenes. Man. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did this gorgeous 22 by 28 inch scene. Four seasons, four colors, four different scenes, four portals, lots of fours in this painting. We even used four brushes. No, I'm just kidding. We used way more than four brushes. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Hi, hello. Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did this gorgeous 22 by 28 inch scene. Four colors, four portals, four scenes. Ah, it's crazy. You obviously love it. That's why you wanted to click on this link. You want to learn how to paint this video. So, 